Well, Nate Northington's father idolized Joe Lewis and Jim Brown, and Nate Northington himself was just a few years younger than Muhammad Ali. Now, he never imagined that he'd be barrier breakers like those men, but he didn't know pretty early that he'd be special. Louisville native Nate Northington comes from a fast family. I might have been the slowest one of all of them. That's saying something when he sped around neighborhood pickup games that saw the likes of Wes Unseld, Lenny Lyles, and Mike Red. Playing football with just kids that were four or five years older, that didn't bother me. I could run past them. I've never felt that I wouldn't be successful. He would star at Thomas Jefferson High School, and UK recruited him to integrate SEC football. I felt that I wanted to be involved in the civil rights movement. Kentucky Governor Ned Breath had pitched the senior on making history with dinner at the governor's mansion. The governor just was, was instrumental in reassuring me that it was something that we needed to do. A better opportunity for every Kentuckian. Final selling point was the fact that I would not be the only one. Greg Page, a defensive end, joined Northington, who played running and defensive back. The roommates thrived on the freshman team known as the Kittens. I made a good play. Nat, you're so lucky. I was just telling myself, well, that's not luck, Greg. That's, that's skill. <laughs> Off of the field, they grew close, building a black bond in the face of racism. They were tight, mainly because you survive because you have to have someone you can relate to. You take the lynchings, you take the segregation, you take going down south and, and being called every, everything but the child of God when you walk on the field. Friendship is, is to support one another. That's what Greg and I did. Right up until tragedy struck. Greg, entry was uh, devastating to all of us. As a sophomore, a hit in practice paralyzed Paige from the neck down for 38 days. He was still upbeat, he felt like everything's gonna be okay. He passed away. He literally gave his life to integrate football. Football was secondary to me after what happened to Greg. Yet a day after his death, the Wildcats still played Ole Miss. Northington became the first black player to play in an SEC game. It was difficult to actually go out there. We knew we had to do it for Greg. We accomplished what we had to accomplish. But history lasted just three minutes due to Northington suffering a shoulder injury. He could no longer be himself on the field or off of it. While living alone, he became isolated and depressed, not wanting to go to class. He was on an island. They took his meal tickets. They didn't cancel him. It was a very difficult time for me. I'm not a person that really talks a lot. I let a lot out. The pressure just kind of built and built and built. So we met with Wilbur Hackett, Houston Hogg, and Albert Johnson to tell them he was leaving UK. But the biggest thing about the meeting was, guys, y'all got to see this thing through. They should stay and continue what Greg and I had began. The reason Houston and I made it was for Greg's memory and for Nate's wisdom. Hogg and Hackett would be three-year lettermen, with Hackett becoming the first black captain in any SEC sport. Northington went to Western Kentucky, helping the Hilltoppers win the Ohio Valley Conference. It was totally different. I think the pressure, the, the everything that I'd been through got better, respected, and everything. But his legacy is forever felt in Lexington, where he stands with Hackett, Hogg, and Page outside of Kroger Field. The older I get, the more I realize the tremendous impact of the story itself. It changed the face of football in the South. Man, what an amazing story, and that is only touching on Nate Northington's story. He wrote an autobiography telling his entire story. It is called Still Running.